Hi. <clears throat> My name's Solo Monk. You're listening to The Solo Monk Show. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the new record I'm putting out, July 1st, uh, Monday. It's probably going to be very hot, July, Alabama. Maybe you're listening to it not in Alabama. So maybe it's not going to be hot. It'll be hot in Alabama. Anyway, so the new album, uh, it's a 72-minute playlist, just a completely sequenced record. And the reason I made it that way is because I spend a lot of my time late at night listening to records, and I almost exclusively listen to full album streams, whether it's jazz records, hip-hop records, um, whatever. Those are mostly what I'm listening to right now. But, uh... Yeah, so it's always these these long form records that I listen to, and uh, and I know that people don't like that at all, but it's the way that I I think and process music. And right now I'm still doing music as an art form, so I mean it's very uh, it's very important that uh, it works, you know. So like format's important, the way you present it's important, uh, the way you consume things is important, and. Um, so it's going to be 72 minutes, and it's a really great record. It's called, Why Does the Brain Make Me Miss Bad People? And it's about this like reptilian aspect of our brain and how we process trauma. How after a while, if we experience enough trauma, uh, it becomes ingrained in our identity and we can't let it go. We can never let it go. So, to... Uh, we, we kind of are attracted to the things that kind of perpetuate our, our situation and our, our trauma and our pain and our heartache. So whether it's like choosing the wrong partners or it's about developing relationships with, you know, just friendships or um, pretty much all relationships, uh, a lot of times people kind of perpetuate the pain that they experience. Uh, or they have experienced because it's so closely related to what they perceive as their identity and they don't know who they'll be without their trauma you know after a while you you talk about it a lot and, and you keep talking about it because you have to talk about it because it's always on your brain and it manifests itself in different ways but uh, it it gets to a point where it seems like you almost need to perpetuate it just to keep your identity up and what would happen if if you took away all the bad parts that take over your daily processes, um, who would you be? You know, who would you be without the, the, the pain or the trauma or the, uh, the limited circumstances at all times? You know? Who are we if given the opportunities that we pine over? Uh, and why do we sometimes squander opportunities? It's just part of your attitude as a person. Uh, sometimes. I mean, you know, there's systemic issues all across the board about different things, and uh, whether it's uh, reinforced in, like, culture and uh, society, uh, or if it's actual, like, policies, political policies. Um, our worth in the capitalist system is always measured by our time and energy. That's the only thing you have as a poor person. Which, it, I mean, it all it's all tied together in um, how we view ourselves and how uh, we give ourselves worth and how we, you know, there's like this, there's a self-evaluation, where, who we are, where we want to be, the distance between here and there, how to get there, and um, this whole record is about dealing with trauma, whether it's... Uh, poverty, uh, systemic issues, um, you know, it's relationships, uh, you know, with your parents, or and, and how we just keep moving it along because we get confused about what the pain is and what it's there for and what our, what our fears are there for. It's, so we don't perpetuate these problems. It's not but we get confused because it's hard to tell without being able uh, to have time to reflect, you know. And that's another part of this record is, uh, you know, capitalism. It's uh, inherently not going to work. You can't make systems for profit 
I leaned against the prosperity of others and didn't expect people not to have an existential crisis at all times. People live quietly, desperate lives, paycheck to paycheck, you know, only a few paychecks away from complete financial ruin. And on top of that, we're trying to deal with our own emotional issues, and we live in complete isolation. Though digitally, it seems like we're all connected all the time, and it creates a lot of weird things. And that ties in with this next thing. I quit alcohol about six months ago, and the alcohol seemed like it muted my emotions so that way I could go through life stoically and detached and survive, essentially. Um, it muted the emotions that basically told me that I wasn't happy, that the decisions I was making um, was hurting me in, in the long run, you know. Um, And it's something that's given to us. It's something that's like readily available. We have a huge portion of our culture surrounding it. Like just ingrained in everything that we do. Like it's hard to date. It's hard to hang out with people as adults. Almost everything centers around alcohol or some form of alcohol. And if not, then you have to hang out with religious people. I'm not religious. Uh, or you have to hang out with AA people. I, I, uh, it goes back to the religion thing. I don't really believe in those type of systems, but um, so it's hard. It's hard to navigate everything and not feel like you're in complete isolation. Uh, and then you add the poverty part, and you know it goes back to capitalism. And it seems to all be the same thing. We have to be aware. That's the only way we can combat it. And that's what this record is about. It's about being aware of yourself, being aware of like your responsibility in a relationship. And that's like all relationships. That's not just uh, romantic. It's, you know, our relationship with ourselves is important. That's the one we neglect the most. Most of my friends, you know, don't have any kind of real dialogue with themselves and about how healthy their interior monologue is and how they're approaching life or how they're approaching how they measure themselves and um, yeah so I think I'm going to wrap it up there because it's a lot of stuff to kind of chew on but the record comes out this Monday July 1st 2019 it's called Why Does He Brain make me miss bad people and just to clue you in there's no such thing as bad people there's just we're all bad we're all good and we're all ugly we're all human and we're stuck in a system that makes us look at each other like we don't matter and we don't exist and we're fighting to exist and we're all trying to get on a platform and we're all trying to find our own plateau to breathe and we're like just a bunch of rats in a garbage bin just trying to climb out um, so we should lead with love we should lead with empathy and basically as individuals we should offer what this system doesn't offer we should perpetuate the ideas that the system takes from us that's love, empathy, understanding, knowledge. Uh, you know, we should we should care about ourselves and we should care about each other. And when you care about yourself, you are empowering yourself to help others. You have to take care of yourself first. You have to love yourself before you can love other people. You you give what you think you have, and you take what you think you deserve. And a lot of people need to think about that, uh, especially with the circumstances of their life. Um, it helped me out a lot just to unmute my emotions, stop the drinking, stop the cigarettes, stop the self-destruction, endless self-destruction, the bad decisions. Because it's 
hard to quantify the feeling of utility. And I understand that, but uh, you gotta start engaging. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get involved. You gotta get involved in your own life. And that includes all the messy emotional stuff. It's not fun to uh, sort through your emotions, sort through the deep, dark ones. Like, you know, pull back the banana and, and you just keep pulling and it's just an existential hole and you just keep pulling and there's no banana and no nutrition inside. Or that's what it feels like. But that's not the way it is. You, When you deconstruct, you get down to like a primal question, a primal answer, and you can build up from there. And I, I would definitely tell any of my friends who are dealing with uh, depression or trauma or getting out of abusive relationships or abusive relationships with alcohol, substances, anything. Um, you know, start taking time to care for yourself. You know, start brushing your teeth, start taking showers more often, start um, doing the things that make you feel you. You know, you only have one life to live. You're gonna fucking die. No one's gonna get in the coffin with you. Your friends aren't gonna be there. Your mom's not gonna be there. No one's gonna be there. You have to take care of yourself so you can take care of the people that you care about. And so you can have healthier relationships with the people you care about. Um, yeah, that's what this whole record's about. It's about trying not to perpetuate the abuse and trauma that we have endured in our lives. It's about leading the love trying to, leaving with self-understanding and deconstructing yourself, but like, you know, doing it with purpose. Don't just unravel yourself until there's nothing left, you know. Anyway, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, Solo Monk out. Please check out the record July 1st. Please check out the record July 1st. Please check out the record July 1st. It's going to be good. I promise. It's, it's awesome. July 1st. Thank you. Solomon. Out.